Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Kakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us his truth and who rule well. Peace, love, salutations, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. You know, back again with another one through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All right, this one is in regards to all right, this uh, article that was uploaded to RT World News, all right, today, February 9th, 2020, and it says, Stones thrown by sect rioters as police arrest rabbi accused of rape and healing for money. And I bet you, you know, Vocab Malone or any other person that calls themselves coming up against the Hebrew Israelites, all right, will not report, you know, on this matter, all right? But they're constantly coming up against us to try to demonize us, you know, where there's a sect of people that are upon the planet Earth that are claiming to be a people that they are not, all right, that are living in a particular region, a particular land that is known as the Holy Land, and they're doing all kind of wickedness. These same people are the people that are ruling over the Earth, and that's the reason why the Earth is full of vi violence and is full of all matter of wickedness now until these people come down out of power all right this world is going to keep you know uh, waxing worse and worse all right and these people are behind you know different bombing of nations behind certain wars all right they're known for rape and pedophilia all right but no one speaks out against this all right but they'll come against us you know for prophesying and for saying that Yahweh is going to hand out judgment which the things that we are saying are in the scriptures, man, which goes to show you that they're not in the right spirit, man. All right. And this land all right, that is known as the Holy Land, all right, that land isn't going to be cleansed and it's not going to have peace and it's going to remain desolate until we enter back into it, man. And when we enter into it, all right, we're going to live 100 percent. All right, according to the law, such and commandments of the Most Heavenly Father, because they're going to be written in our, our inward parts, man. All right, once we get in the land, you're not going to have to teach an Israelite, you know, thou should not, you know, commit adultery, or thou should not eat pork, or know Yahweh, you know, or know Yahweh Shai. All right, those things are going to be automatically in us, all right, because it's going to be downloaded into us. All right, we're going to be programmed to be righteous completely. All right, this is Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, and the 31st verse, which reads, it says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So this new covenant all right, that began with Yahweh Shai dying and raising back up from the dead and sitting on the throne all right, next to the Most Heavenly Father in heaven all right, is going to be fully implemented once the children of Israel are in the new new." Uh, uh, kingdom all right once we're in the kingdom of israel all right that's about to be established this is when this covenant is going to be fully implemented all right because there's things that have to happen under this covenant to make it actually work and one of the things is us receiving a new body all right and not having these bodies that are fashioned after the similitude of of the first adam all right which was yahweh shai but he also came as a second Adam or through the body of Yahweh Shai, man. This is uh, 1 Corinthians, all right, the 15th chapter. And uh, beginning at verse 22, it says, For as in, in Adam all die, even so in Mashiach shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, uh, Yahweh Shai, the first fruits, afterwards they that are Yahweh Shai is that is coming. It says, and then, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the Most High, even the Father, when he have put down all ruling authority and power. For he must reign till he have put all things under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. All right, so we're going to live forever all right, within those new glorified bodies. All right, and all of this is made possible through Yahweh, man. It says, for he have put all things under his feet, but we, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. So 
why do we die? Well, the beginning of death entered, you know, when Eve transgressed. And then her husband followed, you know, which was Adam. You know, she taught him of those philosophies. And then death came in, you know, into effect. You know? So even though the law, such and commandments were given us, our, these bodies were never taken away. So therefore, it, we couldn't keep the law, such and commandments perfectly. All right. But through Yahweh Shai, you know, dying, all right, and raising back up from the dead and, you know, from the elect believing on him, all right, this, this is made possible. So in the, in the kingdom, you know, or when the most timely father comes, you know, sends his son Yahweh Shai to deliver those elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the world, all right, they're going to receive new bodies, all right, and they're not going to sin anymore, all right, the wages of sin is death, all right, the, the, the payment for sin is death, so we're going to live forever, jumping down to uh, verse 52, it says, in a moment and in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall raise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and the mortal must put on Im put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. All right, so we don't have to worry about transgression, all right, the law anymore, you know, committing iniquity and receiving the penalty of death. All right, even at this very moment, all right, we are in, in chains of darkness. All right, we are in these bodies. We have sicknesses. We have ailments. All right, and all of these things are penalties, you know, of, of us not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. All right, we're going through the curses that have not been lifted. Even unto this day, they have not been lifted. All right, but at the time that Yahweh Shai comes and gathered the elect, all right, those elect are going to be uh, put into new bodies. And those new bodies are not going to know sickness. They're not going to know disease. And why? Because also with those new bodies, they're going to have the law, such and commandments programmed in them perfectly. All right. It says, Behold, the days come, Sep Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This is back in Jeremiah 31 and 31. It's not, not, it says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Israel, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, said Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel and with the house of, uh, and after those days, Salakia, it says, Sev Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts, and I will be their power, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every one, or man his brother, saying, No, Yahweh, for they shall all know me. From the least of uh, un, of them unto the greatest of them, said Yahweh, for I will get, I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. And when is this going to happen? This is going to happen when they're put back into the land. All right, all of the children of Israel, every single one of them, all right, in the kingdom of heaven, are going to be all righteous, man. All right, every last one of them will be all righteous. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that. And bear with me, all right, because uh, I'm just quoting these scriptures as the Spirit feeds it to me. So this is the book of Isaiah 16 and 21. Thy people shall be all righteous, and they shall inherit the land forever. All right, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. You know, so in the kingdom of heaven, a, the Most High Heavenly Father is going to be glorified through us. All right, we're going to be his righteousness, man. All right. But this is going to take place when they inherit the land and it's going to be Yahweh all right, who sends his son, Yahweh Shai, to gather them from the four corners of the earth and to take them and to place them within this land. man. Now, before I grab a scripture on that, 
I want to grab this right here within uh, Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, and the 26th verse. It says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. All right, in the kingdom of heaven, a man isn't going to have to rape. All right, because he's going to have an ab abundance of, of women. He's going to have a plethora of women. All right, and women are going to throw themselves at him. All right, he's not going to have to, you know, uh, rape a woman or to, you know, to take some box. It ain't going to be no ad uh, adultery committed in the kingdom of heaven. All right, it's not going to be any worshiping of other idols. It's not going to be any eating of swine. It's not going to be any homosexuality. All right, people that commit those things, they won't make it into the kingdom. They're going to perish on this side. If it's an Israelite, they're going to die and come back in their right mind. And they too are going to receive the new heart, all right, as well as a new body. And they're going to be all righteous as well. It says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So all these people that are living within that particular land are right, keeping the commandments of the Most High Heavenly Father and doing them. No, they're not. All right. And they have the heart of the wicked because they are the wicked and therefore they're doing wickedness. Therefore, wickedness is proceeding from them. All right. Them getting getting that land was not all right, through biblical, you know, um, well, it, it was through biblical prophecy. All right. But it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the fulfillment of the righteous and holy people of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai getting the land. Let's say that. It says, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your power. All right? Ye shall be my people, and I will be your power. But the, the scripture says that you're going to dwell in the land that I gave your father. Now, how are you going to get inside of the land? All right, who's going to take you and put you inside of that land? According to the scriptures, it's going to be Yahweh Shai, man. All right, this is Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 30. It says, and then shall appear... The sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, where in the history did we see this? All right, has this transpired yet? Has it happened? All right, did we see this? All right, um, all right, during the the, the 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 period of the Balfour Declaration when it was signed. All right, did we, did we see you know Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Christ? All right, or who this particular people call Yeshua. All right, but his true name is Yahweh Shai. We didn't see that. Why? Because it hasn't happened yet. But it's going to happen in our time. And the ones, ones that's going to be taken out of Ram Ratazai is, is us. So-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans all right, that are in North, Central, and South America or scattered throughout the four corners of the world. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the one end of heaven uh, to the other. Now, uh, now, it pretty much says the same thing within Isaiah, the 11th chapter. In the 11th verse, it says, and it shall come to pass, all right, in that day that uh, Yahweh shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Now, the first time that he recovered his people was out of the land of Egypt. And when you go into that word for recover, all right, the word there in the Hebrew language, all right, is kona, all right, which means uh, to to acquire, you know, to to possess, you know, to get get something as your possession, all right? So we are the most unheavenly father's possession, man. And when you go into the book of um, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, in verse 68, it says this. It says, And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, and thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Now, what word do you think is there for buy? All right. The word there is Quanai. So it's not going to be a literal man within the flesh like you and me, all right, that catch the same diseases and that are susceptible to the same, you know, viruses and ailments, all right, and, and, and sh you know, uh, uh, have to sit down on the toilet and shit and piss, you know. 
and, 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 you know, that's subject to the same weather and, you know, things that we have to go through here on the earth. All right. It's not going to be a man like that that delivers you, man. All right. The deliverance began with Yahweh Shai two year, 2000 years ago when he died on that cross. So it started 2000 years ago with Yahweh Shai when he died and he rose again on the on the on the uh, rose again from the dead, you know, and made it possible, you know, went up on high and made it possible for us to receive the Holy Spirit, you know, and to receive forgiveness through believing on him, man. All right. Because we came into this captivity as a punishment, you know, for our sins and our iniquity. All right. Which Egypt within this regard is speaking of America. All right. And that the day was going to come that we were going to be revived and the spirit was going to be poured back upon us. And through the belief upon Yahweh Shai, we were going to be saved, man. And that eventually he was going to come to redeem us. All right. To recover us, to get us as a possession. All right. Out of this land, out of this region, which is known as America, man. All right, and this is happening right before your very eyes now. Going back to Isaiah, the, 10th, uh, the 11th chapter, and reading it 11 again, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from uh, Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Milan, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the isles of the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an assign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four quarters of the earth, man. And he's going to do this through Yahweh Shai. Now, Yahweh Shai is going to send the angels to gather all right, the elect all right, from the, you know, the, the tribe of Ephraim, and from the tribe of Judah. All right? And he's going to bring them together all right and they're going to possess the land now being in that land all right there's not going to be any wickedness that is going on like how it's going on now all right because the true israelites are not in the land all right once they get in the land as the scriptures that i just read broke it down all right they're going to be all righteous because they're going to have new bodies and they're going to have new hearts so they're not going to commit you know things like this individual within this article has done. All right. The people that are in the land right now. All right. They are from the tribe of Esau Edom. This is Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. All right. And not only Esau Edom, but you also have uh, uh, Ishmaelites that are in the land as well. All right. And they're fighting over the land as if it belongs as a possession to either of them. All right, but the time is coming where they're going to be taken out of that land. All right, and the true Israelites are going to be put inside of that land, man. All right, this is um, the book of Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, and beginning at 4. It says, Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahweh power. Thus said Yahweh power to the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, and to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about, you know, because after we were taken out, you know, these heathens went in. All right. It says, therefore, thus saith Yahweh power, surely in the father of my jealousy, have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is what? It's, a, it's another way to say Edom. And have appointed my lands into their possessions with all joy, joy of their heart, with despiteful minds, all right, and cast it out as a prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills and rivers, and to the valleys, that said, Yahweh, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. All right, but the time is going to come that no heathen is going to enter in, man. All right, and that land is going to be a possession unto the true Israelites. Right now, all right, you have a bastard that is dwelling in the land. All right, as it states within the scriptures, Zechariah 9 and 6, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. All right, so you have a fatherless individual that's living in that land. Now, that father in, uh, fatherless individual, all right, is, is Esau Edom. And what proves that when you go into the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, all right. Verse seven, it says, if ye endure chastening, 
the most high dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the, whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. So is Esau, you know, receiving chastisement the way that we're receiving chastisement for sinning and committing, committing iniquity against the most heavenly father? All right, which the most high heavenly father chastises us different than how he chastises the heathen. All right, when we sin, the most heavenly father afflicts us right away. All right, but when these heathens sin, the most high heavenly father allows their iniquity to increase until their destruction. And that's what he's doing with these particular people. So there's a time coming when he's going to judge them. And when he judged them, the true Israelites are going to be put in the land. And when they're in the land, all of them are going to be righteous. You're not going to have to teach an Israelite. And what's going to happen is the other nations are going to come unto us and flow unto us. All right. And we're going to teach them to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and to keep the law, such and commandments. All right. They're going to serve captivity all right, for a thousand years. And within that thousand year period, they're going to have to be taught to, to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We're going to make them serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai through force, man. All right. Which shows that they're not a part of this second covenant. Now, this is Isaiah 2 and, and, and 3. It says, And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountains of Yahweh, to the house of the Most High of Jacob, and we will, and he will teach us all right, of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Now, the law isn't going out of Zion right now. The law isn't flowing out of that land right now it's not flowing out of jerusalem it's not flowing out of israel all right but wickedness is flowing out of that place and why because the true people have not been given that land back all right there's violence coming out of that place there's protests coming out of that place all right there's clashes over there between ishmael and between edom there's clashes over there between edom and edom you have so-called rabbis raping women, man. All right, and, and, and charging people money for healings. You have adultery. You have people eating pork. So this land is going to be cleansed. It's going to be cleansed through destruction. All right? It's going to be cleansed through destruction as, as well as America and different parts of Europe. Now, reading on, it says, And many shall go and say, All right, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us all right, his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem, and he shall judge among the nations and, sh and, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks, and nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So in the kingdom of heaven, all right, there's not going to be any violence. All right? Let me see if I can find that scripture. Um, Isaiah 16 and 18, it says, Violence shall no more be heard in thy lands, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise, man. All right, so isn't that a violent act? Now, of course, you know, in the scripture, it does speak about, you know, rape. You know, which um, there's a particular scripture in the book of Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, all right, which if a woman wasn't betrothed, you know, and she was a virgin, then that man will have to deal with her as a wife, all right? And he would have to give her father 50 shekels of silver. Now, that, were, that wasn't you know, a, a custom that was practiced and men just went around just raping virgins and stuff like that. But it was something that was placed there just in case it happened. All right. So this isn't a doctrine that we preach. All right. We don't preach a rape doctrine. All right. But we just go over what the scriptures say and we preach on what the scriptures say. All right. If that was to happen, all right, then you have to deal with that woman as a wife because you humbled her, man. Now, if you went and raped someone else's, all right, woman, all right, then you've committed adultery. Now, if that woman was in the city and she didn't cry out, then that means that she consented unto it. All right, she, she enjoyed it. She wanted it. All right, so therefore her and the man will be put to death. Now, if she was in the field 
and she cried out and no one heard her, all right, then only the man would die. You know, it's just like, it would be just like if someone was out in the field and, and, and someone, you know, murdered his brother privily, you know, out in the field, you know, but pretty much, all right, what's going on over in that land, the point being, all right, is, is, is violence that is going on over within that land, all right, but the scriptures say that the, the time is going to come where the true Israelites get into that land, it's not going to be any more, because uh, uh, the, the Hebrew word there is, because uh, uh, Salakia, Kamas, Kamas. So there's not going to be any injustice, all right? Because they're not following the laws, all right? So when you break the law, and 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 in a lot of cases, it go they go un, unpenalized, all right? Because they'll call you the anti s word, you know, if you speak out against these things. So they go unpenalized. So that's injustice, all right? Cruelty. Wrong, violence. All right, there's not going to be any more wrongdoing. There's not going to be any more cruelty. There's not going to be any more injustice. All right, but righteousness is going to flow from that land. So with that, you know, I truly hope that this lesson is edifying. I'm going to put this article in the des uh, description box. And feel free to check it out, you know. Um... It, I'm not, I won't be surprised, you know, if this video got a strike, you know, and they took it down and put a strike on my channel. All right, but I couldn't resist our right, reporting this. Members of a cult like sect tried everything to pre prevent officers from bringing to custody, custody a controversial Israeli rabbi thought to have uh, taken advantage of gravely ill people and convicted of sexual assault on women. All right, so it wasn't just one woman, it was multiple women. It says Israeli police have arrested uh, Rabbi Eliezer uh, Berlin earlier su on Sunday morning, along with his wife and other top members of the ultra-Orthodox uh, Shuvu Bonim sect. Shortly afterwards, the sect followers are uh, through the nearby street trying to seal it off and stop the vehicles from carrying Berlin, man. What is what does this say that this is going to happen in the kingdom of heaven? All right, things like this. All right, when the holy people is put back in the land. All right, which shows you that the true holy people, which is us, is not in that land yet. Stunning footage from the arrest shows them hurling stones. All right, at officers and banging fists. All right, on the passing cars, riot police shield with the with the vehicles as it passed by and tried to stand ground. Two of them were injured, local media reported. All right, so not only was this man, you know, over there raping women, all right, but he was also, all right, all right uh, doing false healings for money, man. You know, it says Berlin was, was, was brought into custody after an investigation revealed a network of the cult members that allegedly extorted money from hundreds of individuals in exchange for rabbis' blessings of healings called redemption of the soul. All right, so this man can't redeem a soul, man. All right, the only redemption of your soul comes through the Most Holy Father, and that's only if you're an Israelite that believes on his son, Yahweh Shai. That's the only way that you can receive redemption, you know? So, and, and then that's scriptural too. Let me grab this one, one scripture right here, which goes to show you that they're not, <laughs> they're not the people, man. Because it says, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, this is um, Psalms, the 49th chapter, verse 7, which I'll go up to uh, verse 5. It says, Wherefore should I fear, all right, in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to the Most High a ransom for them. For them, for the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceases forever. So you can't, you can't use money to redeem your soul, man. All right, the only way you're gonna get redemption is if you're a true Israelite that believes on Yahweh Shai, and if you're part of the elect. That's it.
You know, you can't give money to the most Heavenly Father to ransom, you know, your life. All right? You can't purchase a golden ticket into, into the kingdom of heaven. All right? The only thing that you can offer, you know, is your sacrifice and praise. All right? And believe and have faith and hope that the most Heavenly Father will redeem you. But this shows you that they're not the true people. So with that, I really hope that this lesson was edifying until the next time. Shalom.